You can either have success or revenge, but you can't have both. Success is letting it go. When you're talking about a world of competition, it created this excuse for your age. And I vowed that I was going to get every person who ever doubted me, who ever insulted me, who ever made me feel slightly uncomfortable, I was going to get you back. And I was going to show you. But I was that focused. I was like, man, I'm here. I'm here. And I can show them I could be, I could be beyond. A lot of your thoughts are not yours. You know, it's, it's like an auxiliary cord. And people plug in to your stuff. You, know, you pick up things and you're like, why do I not think in that? And your thoughts determine your feelings. And your emotions determine your actions. And so if someone can get into your thoughts, they can change the way you feel. And in a very competitive world, people tell you you're broken. But what I learned is that you're not broken. You're just not finished. Because nothing's broken. It's just things don't fit. And you pull it off and you put it back together the right way. And you can rebuild yourself. But the problem is, it's not anybody else's job to assemble you. You got to assemble yourself. And when we talk about rage, What we're talking about is an attempt to control things you can't control. You can't love someone and control them at the same time. And I, I had no control. And growing up with an alcoholic father, one of my earliest memories is him knocking my mother out. And I was like, got it, man. You run the world right now until I do. I was, I was obsessed with muscle, even as a little kid. A lot of my, my desire to be strong was because I knew one day I may have to kill my father. He was unending, never bending, just constant intimidation. And I had a desire to get strong. I knew I had to protect. One day would I have to protect my mom, protect my family. I started living my life like I was in a revenge movie. I was exhausted. It would be the end of me. I would do this stuff where I would go work out and then I would work out until I couldn't move. And then I would rest up and then I would go and I would flex my muscles until they cramped. Now, it was it was sadistic. Of it was course. masochistic. Yeah. But I said no one. I will never stop doing sit-ups. I will never stop. I would, you know, again, sit-ups and push-ups until my stomach, till I was curled over in tears. Oh my God. And then I go do more. Because I said, no one's going to beat me. I realized that the image of Terry Crews was more important than who Terry Crews was. Because you have to know who you are. Absolutely. You have to re- share who you are. But the game is not to share who you Lions. are. The big thing, I mean, growing up, I cared what everyone thought. Especially when you're in that world like that, everyone's opinion mattered way too much. And how do you learn to not care or ruminate on the opinions of others now? When you've been so conditioned to people please right. for years, it, how, how did you... It takes time. Yeah. It's not overnight. And I would never encourage anybody to just go test it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's something that takes the years mother, yeah. and years. The big thing about being tough is people thought, you know, you'd be able to throw punches, but it's really about endurance. Mm-hmm. Being able to be alone, being able to stand alone, but change is inevitable. I'll never forget um, coming out of therapy 
And this guy was like, they were like, Terry, you have to learn how to tell people no, because I was a pleaser. I remember being in counseling and the, the counselor asked me, she said, what if a director told you to do something you didn't want to do? I said, well, I have to do it. And she said, no, you don't. I said, yes, I do. She said, no, you don't, Terry. I said, well, I'm an actor. She said, yeah, but you don't have to do what the director, everything the director tells you to do. I said, yes, I do, because I'm an actor. And she's like, no, no, you don't. And she said, Terry, you don't have to do what you don't want to do. I didn't know, especially since I was such a pleaser. It was one of the things, well, yeah, yeah. And I'll never forget this guy came up to me and said, hey, man, can I get an autograph? And I was going to do it. I was in practice. I said, and I looked at him. I said, no. He said, come on, man. Come on, man. I said, no, no, no. And I was, I went crazy. And the guy was like, dude, relax, man. And I was like shaking. It was the first time I was exercising this. No, my no, no. And I was shaking. I got back in the car and I said, you got to say, I was going, I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was going crazy. But what I was doing was dissecting and piecing and understanding who I was and what made me tick. Why do I feel angry if someone says that? Or why am I, why am I insulted? Why? Is it me or is it them? And see, and once I started asking these questions, I can let it go. You gotta start exercising it. Just ask yourself why you're so offended. How did I get here? <laughs> the thoughts turned into emotions that turned into actions that turned into mania. You have to do what's within your power to make things right. Remember, you, you were out of control before. Anything can make you go off. This is responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have an ability to respond differently. You have that now. I don't want men to feel like they're alone. I don't want men to feel like it's just them. And they don't know any way out and the whole thing. I have to be vulnerable. I have to share this part so that you know how far I came. But what I learned is that you're not broken. You're just not finished. We understand the fire burning within you. The relentless desire to conquer, to overcome, to become the best version of yourself. And we've captured that spirit in every fabric we create. Stand tall, my friend. Unleash your potential and ignite the fire within. <laughs>